Hello everybody and welcome back to the Body Coach TV. Today's video is all about improving your kettlebell technique and I'm joined by a master kettlebell trainer, it's Tom from Techno Gym. Hey Joe. Tom, how long have you been doing this and why do you love kettlebells so much? Uh, doing this for about nine years now. Um, kettlebell is amazing, a one stop shop for a total body workout. You can do HIIT, you can do strength training, you can do strength endurance, power endurance and you don't need a gym membership because all you need is one kettlebell. Which like is this. one of these, okay? So, first of all, yeah, Tom, before we get cracking and do the moves, we're going to work through nine kettlebell moves. Because uh, I really want to get better, at, I basically want to improve my technique so I can do more videos, to do more videos on the channel for kettlebells and hopefully, yeah, improve your body and physique using kettlebells. Right, so, first I'm going to do a little bit of mobility. So, what should we do first? Hips. Just drop down one knee on the floor. Yep. Uh, rocking forwards. Should feel that stretch through the hip flexor. And then you're just going to reach up the same arm as the knee that's on the ground. So just reaching forwards, open up that hip. You might feel it going to your abs as yeah, well. Yeah, I really feel that. An insertion point there. And then you want to lean back. So we start to get into your upper back, bit of extension through the spine. How's that feel? Yeah, I can feel it. Because you do use a lot of hip flexors, you know, hamstrings, and you don't want to injure yourself. The worst thing to do is get in there cold, pick up a heavy kettlebell, start swinging it like a hero, and you injure yourself and you're out. So mobility and warming up the body is really important. Always take it seriously. And um, yeah, so switch, switch legs? Yeah, about 30 seconds each side will do. Nice and easy. So where did you learn to do kettlebells and how long have you been um, teaching it? Oh, kettlebells would be probably one of the first things I learned when I got into the industry. Just because they were, I don't know, really intense. So yeah. I really liked the idea of it. Come from, come from Russia. So you know what the Russians are like in their training. Yeah. Quite militant. Um, really got into it. I uh, learned, from, learned from a really hardcore instructor. She was awesome. And then just carried it on in my training all the time. Yeah. Love using it with clients, love using it with other coaches. It is um, it is a great bit of kit to have. I mean, I always say if you can if you if you can't afford a full gym membership or a personal trainer, getting a little pair of kettlebells, you can really get a good workout and it obviously it's gonna build strength, but it also really gets your heart out when you work in a kind of sequence, complexes and stuff. Totally. Right, right. we do uh, hamstrings. So you mentioned hamstrings before, really important. Posterior chain exercise, like like a swing, single arm swing, suitcase deadlift. Every time you swing a kettlebell, we need to get those hamstrings going. So we're going to go into a push-up position, feet really wide apart. We're just going to do an inchworm. So you're going to walk the hands back and then get as far back as you can and try and stretch those hamstrings out. Move your hands around a little bit as well to get a bit of rotation. Oh, Load up tight. the frontal plane. And, and then the guitar strings, right? they're going to snap these two. <laughs> <laughs> and then rock back forwards. And then treat yourself to a push-up, seeing as you're down here. Might as well. And then walk it back. And again, you're looking at like 30 seconds of work, just trying to oh. explore that range through your hamstrings, see if you can get to your heels, see if you can get to your outside of your ankles. And then, seeing as it's the second rep, let's do two push-ups, eh? So if people are really finding their legs are bending in this thing, they can go a bit wider, right, to stretch them out a little bit. Yeah, you can. So you don't, because obviously not everyone's gonna have a really straight leg, you might have a slight bend, but just feel the stretch a little bit. Yeah, exactly. In the hamstring, don't overdo it. As long as you're not in too much pain, as long as it feels nice, then uh, it's all good. And then three push-ups, so we start to get our shoulders nice and warm as well. Right, nice, I like that one. And then why not, why not fourth? Oh, you're killing me, mate. This is only the warm-up, innit? Yeah, we're just warming up, man. That'll do, eh? Right, also lovely. So, should we go through the moves then? Yeah. What are we going to go through? So, first of all, really important, which everyone might be familiar with, is a kettlebell swing. What weight are we going to choose? And also, just for the viewers, a lot of people ask the question is, what weight do I need to invest in? You know, doing the pair. What's the what's the advice you give on that? So, it's a really tricky answer to give. Like, it depends on so many different factors. What you need to do is just be really, really careful with technique, how it feels. As a rough guide, really rough guide. Don't take this out of context. If you're a beginner, like you've never ever done this before, you're probably looking at an eight kilo kettlebell for a lady, maybe a twelve for a guy. Um, intermediate, you're probably looking at like 16 for a guy, maybe a 12 for a lady. Kilograms, yeah? Yeah, kilos, yeah. yeah. And then advanced, you may be looking at a 20 or a 24 for a guy, but it depends on so many factors. The golden rule would be, if your techers aren't on point, don't go up yeah, in weight. Definitely. And also, kettlebells traditionally go up by four kilo weights, so you're gonna have to play around and see how it feels. We're gonna do a complex, so... Is a 12 right for me, you think? Yeah, 12 would be good, but you might find with the swing, because you're, you're a strong guy, you well, might be I'm not sure about that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've seen some of your I'm weaker workouts. than I look. I'm weaker than I look. If no, I'm stronger than I, no, yeah. I'm definitely not as strong as I look, basically. If you use a weight that's too light for you, you're just going to be like muscling it the yeah. whole way, the whole time. You're not going to be using your glutes, your hamstrings, and your abs. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, I'll go for a 12. So 
Do you want to demo it first and I can follow you, follow your lead? Good call. So probably side on is the best way to look at it. We're looking for a hip hinge. So you want a nice loose grip the whole time. I'm just going to let this kettlebell come between my knees and just snap my hips up. And I'm trying to keep my hands as loose as possible so I'm not using too much shoulder. I'm just trying to snap my hips through. And then at the top, so you're really using your hamstrings and your glutes, right? Yeah. To, push, to drive forward. And as I get to the top, I'm trying to squeeze my bum, brace my abs, slam my heels down into the ground so my quads are nice and tight. Yeah. So we're getting quads, glutes, hamstrings. Got a big, firm, juicy right. buttocks. This is the one to do. A lot of people find it difficult to connect and actually feel it. They swing and they're like, I'm not feeling it. Like, You've almost got to like, just like clench it at the top of them. You really activate it. Exactly. Like, think about what you're doing. And on yeah? the way back, think about trying to get your hips back to the window. That's it, nice. So am I bending my knees too much or nope. is that? Not Enough. at all, that's good. It's going to be, because you've got tight hamstrings, which you find out in the warm up, there's not going to be a huge amount of knee bend going on. What we're looking for is pelvis travelling backwards rather than pelvis travelling down to the ground. A lot nice. of people come, you know, right down. I mean, how, how low should you swing this kettlebell and so, how far should you come towards the ground? So we can see here, if you look, as, as you go lower, you start to get a bit of a curve through your lower back. Yeah, and it's so you, Yeah, we, we want to avoid that one. A nice straight back. So you want the kettlebell to pretty much be going between the knees. No lower than that. In an ideal world, you can see how it's it's just clipping Joe's bum at the back. That's pretty good. I'm Means really feeling that right in my glute, in my glutes now. Perfect. And now, as you snap through, let's get the abs tight, butt <laughs> tight. And you can see now, as you start to drive your hips more, see how high that kettlebell is starting to come now. Oof. Basically, means it's too light. Sorry, dude. Yeah, I'm um, I'm definitely feeling it in the bum. Right. So you happy with that then? That looked really good. Just be aware, like as the weight increases. That, that's when technique's going to start. Let's go a little bit heavier. So I'll try let's a bit try heavier. Let's 16. go for a 16. Um, Sammy and I face this way. Oh, it's tiring this kettlebell business. Right. So let's do 20 swings. Oh my god. Loose grip. Okay, 20 swings. Nice tight abs. Right. Snap those hips through. <sighs> nice. Keep the heels as, as, as jammed into the ground as you can the entire time. And then you can see as well, look at those VMOs. Get them nice and tight as you snap through. And then upper back as well. You want the shoulder blades squeezing together at the top. Nice. That's really good. Let's not come too high. Just snap through sort of chest tight so we're not using too much shoulder. Good, Joe. Keep squeezing your bum. Abs tight. Last couple of reps. Good man. Quality. Wow. Quality. Heart rate elevates. So it's like, it really is a cardio move. When you start combining it with other moves, it's gonna smash you, mate. Yes. So, so you've got full body and high reps as well. All right, so cheers, and I'm happy with that. Kettlebell swing, next move. Right, single arm swing. Oh, so, so we're gonna yeah. same movement, but so now it's single arm. Right, you're gonna, gonna be, be deset, destabilized. So there's gonna be a lot of um, rotation going on. So it's a little bit like an anti-rotation exercise. Anything with one arm is always gonna be harder than with two. Yeah, that, that's that's obvious, right? But sometimes we forget. So one arm, I'm gonna go with my weaker arm first, just so I get good technique on the weaker arm. Yeah. And there's a general rule on single arm stuff, you always wanna go with your weaker side first. As soon as you've done a certain number of reps or a certain amount of time with the weaker side, you've earned the right to increase the weight. So if I use a 12 on this side, it feels good. 12 on my strong side, I'm sure will feel good. Then I can go up to a 16 on my weak side. Cool. All right, that's good, so that's, that's, that's done. Same sort of movement through the hips. Just one arm, a little bit of rotation as I reach through. Between my legs. Nice. Are you rotating the kettlebell up. slightly? You can do, yeah, just a little rotation as it, as it swings through. From your shoulder here, sort of thing, yeah. Yeah. And then with this other arm, some people don't really know what to do with it, but it's really important that we have it stabilised. For balance, yeah? Yeah, so if I'm engaging this side here, by the process of irradiation, I'm going to get more muscle activation on the other side. There, yeah. Right, so. Are you righty or lefty? I'm right handed. So change hands. Okay, go left, yeah. Yep. Good. You see now we've got your hips travelling down a little bit. So let's make a really big effort to go back. That's better. There you go. And when we get to the top, let's stay connected through the shoulder blade. One more. Good job. Well, you can change straight into straight in. the other arm. It's a bit of a higher skill movement, you can alternate, like you can go left into right when you've got the technique. Let's keep it a little bit more simple today, but yeah, great. So I'm happy with the swings, but it's one that I also find people do, can get wrong and really injure themselves. So really important, if you watch that back a few times, go through that a few times, 
pick up the focus at the point. So maybe if you can, you have got a mirror, maybe do it in the mirror just to see your form and see your body move. But next move we're going to go on to is a single, you know, suitcase dumbbell. Suitcase deadlift. So suitcase deadlift. Deadlift. Imagine you're carrying a suitcase. That's that's where it comes from. Simple, eh? Which we all do now. So we're gonna be we're gonna be up here. So we can do like a suitcase carry is a really good exercise to throw in there. So you're just carrying it, trying to keep your shoulder back. It's gonna destabilize you. So we're looking at an anti-rotation exercise. For the suitcase deadlift, you want the kettlebell to just be set up sort of just in front of your ankle. And yeah. it's a deadlift, okay? It's not a squat. So I need to be hinging from my hip. So my hips are gonna travel backwards. I don't want my knees coming too far forwards. I'm just gonna drop down. I'm trying to stay as stable as possible. This mirror is amazing for this. Otherwise, I'd probably be over here. So I'm trying to stay as level as possible. Get my shoulder blades nice and tight. I'm just gonna stand up from here. First movement at the top, hips back. Little bit of knee bend again. I want this arm out. Yeah, so when you out. come down, you're back nice and straight, right? There's no pivot, there's no kind of arch in the back. Strong lower back. Yeah, we wanna avoid this position. We wanna avoid this position. Nice, strong. Deadlift position. Good what, muscle, what, what muscle groups do you say that's working the majority of it during that workout exercise? Glutes, hamstrings. The glutes, hamstrings. Shoulder stability, so posterior chain in the upper back. Okay, so and massive, left, yeah. Massive anti rotation exercise as well. So we we really am I rotating ball. this or keeping it straight? Keep it straight, just right. like your suitcase. Unless you wheel a suitcase and then, you know, ball backs are off. Let's get a little bit more knee bend at the bottom. So then a little bit more. You can really feel that. That's it. So that position you're in now is perfect. Get tight through your yeah. shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Really nice. If it's pulling me one way, you've got to kind of, this has got to like strengthen up a little bit. I that's feel it. like it's really pulling me to the right. So that's, that's the anti-rotation side of it. You're having to really switch on. That's the benefit of doing single arm work. How's that, all right? Really good. Yeah, really good. So you just now let's make sure the knees don't travel too far forwards. So we sit, the further we sit back, the more hamstring we get. Yeah, there you go. Last one. Oh. And then make sure on the way down, we're really conscious and relax. So on the way down, we've got to make sure we, we don't just give up. Like we've worked really hard from the bottom. Traditionally, you see this quite a lot. People are like, oh, I've done 10. And then just drop the weight, yeah. So stay really tight when you, when you say that. Good. Well, good. I like that exercise. So nice. exercise number four is squat. squat. Two types of squats. So we've got a goblet squat. How do you do goblet squat? Goblet squat. You can either hold it. By the handles, or we can hold it upside down. Totally up to you, makes no real difference, it's just about comfort. Yeah. And then from here we're gonna squat, so everyone squats a bit differently. Find a comfortable position for your feet, generally shoulder width apart, toes out if you like. From here, first movement, bum's gonna drive back a little bit, gonna drop down, knees out to the side, get as deep as I can go, ideally below parallel. Pop back up, trying to stay as upright as you can. Nice. Yeah, I find this just really, Nice, it loads through the quads nicely, rather than a back squat. I think you can't kind of, with a front squat and a goblet squat, I feel like you can't cheat. You so really have to work the legs more, you know? Yeah, so on a, traditionally, if, when, when you put a bar on someone's back, most people don't have the mobility through the shoulders to keep, to keep a straight back with a bar on the back. So the goblet squat, you're gonna get loads of quad activation. You're gonna get the same, very similar benefits from a back squat, but it's just, it's such a more accessible exercise to do. You don't have to worry about shoulder mobility, it's a very easy position to hold that kettlebell. Elbows up or elbows just tucked in? Elbows tight. So you always want your elbows to be, to be tight into your ribcage, which is going to allow us to get nice and tight through our back. I just feel like the weight really comes through the body in a nice, it comes through me more. Like, I think with back squats, people sometimes use all that. Exactly. It's a good exercise. So that's the goblet squat. Next one we're going to do is front rack. front rack squat. So still a squat, but with the kettlebell, if we start to learn this position called the front rack, Right. It's uh, it allows us to be then able to do lots of things like cleans. Let's presses. go head on with this one. So head on from this one. So it's going to sit like be aware if you've never done this type of stuff before, like this part of your arm is going to hurt because the kettlebell is quite unforgiving. Yeah, You're something where the little bracing things, isn't it? But we'll toughen up, right? So yeah, yeah we'll be alright. So from there, we're going to twist and hold. And where are we going to hold that? Yeah, so it's going to sit. You want your hand in the middle of your chest. Right. Elbow tucked into your rib cage, and that kettlebell is just going to sit on your forearm. <laughs> now it should be a position that you feel really comfortable in. So you should be able to walk around like this all day, all day, just hanging around. Yeah, it's not too much on the shoulder. I think when you're up there, it's obviously shoulder. You're just resting it, yeah. elbow down against your body. If if you're up and you feel your shoulder, you're in a bad position. Your shoulder's going to fatigue, and we don't want that in a squat. So from here, again, like this non-working arm, you want to reach out, get nice and nice and tight, and then you're just going to squat from here. Again, trying to stay upright. Naturally, you want to tip to the right. 
because that's where the weight is. You're just trying to stay as stable as possible. Keep that elbow in, two ribs. Yeah, nice. Really good. It's really, okay. really challenges your body in a different way to like a normal squat or a Smith machine. It's like, it just seems more taxing on the body and you're really having to think about what you're doing with your other bits, you know. You're, this tightens up, your core is really working. The minute you send weight down one side, I'm to really engage this, it's decent. So if you've got two, core, if like you've got that. two, we can go into a double position. Yeah. Do you yeah. interlock the fingers or just keep them like that? It's totally up to you. Right. right. If you're going for high reps, you'll uh. probably go like that because you're more yeah. stable. But if you're not, if it's part of a complex, probably just sit through here. Now, there's more weight, but I'm more stable. As soon as you take one away, it's, yeah. it's a lot harder. That's one of my favourite moves, the front squat. And you can obviously, taking that again, once you've got that rack, you can go into another one of my favourite exercises, which is a reverse lunge. So, is that right? right? Yeah, perfect. Nice big strike. So hand in the middle. Is that right there? Just yeah, there? so hand in the middle of your chest, elbow tight to ribcage. Job done. So, fellas, for my hand to be up, do you know what I mean? Where? Yeah, so you don't want to be tipped too much. That's good. Right there, okay. Again, everyone will be different. Just finding that comfortable spot, as long as yeah. it's not up and out. Brilliant, right, it's a lovely move. So what's next? No, no, exercise number... So next we're going to... Number clean. six is a clean. Cool. So, if you're wearing a watch, smart watch, probably a good opportunity to Get take it off. Otherwise, it might smash. Doing um, well, guys. Right, so... So we're going to finish in that front rack position, okay? So we just learnt the front rack, that's where we're going to finish. So this is where we're going to start. Okay. okay. This is where we start, starting our front rack position. Now we're going to make sure our feet are back to our swing stance. So they're not in our squat stance. Swing stance should generally be sort of hip width apart, would be ideal. Parallel completely fit or turned out a bit? Probably for the swing, uh, we want toes pointing forwards. If we're squatting, you can go out, it's all good. Right, okay. For a swing or a deadlift, toes point forwards, ideally. Right, from here, we're just gonna let the kettlebell roll and it's gonna come down and we're gonna find ourselves sort of in the middle position of a single arm swing. Okay. okay? So I'm just gonna roll the kettlebell down, I'm gonna swing it up, I'm gonna pull it and catch it on my forearm. So you're going to let it roll down, swing, pull it up. I'm trying to use my hips as much as possible. Try and drive my elbow up towards the ceiling. And that kettlebell is just going to roll in and land on my forearm. So again, we're going to finish in that front rack position, a bit tighter. Finish there. Keep it really tight to the body. So as you come up, really big pull with the elbow. Big pull, better. Don't let okay. it touch my hand. Okay. Oh. Oh, so it's really Trust in you, Joe. Close to the body, yeah? yeah? that's it, nice. Big pull with the elbow. <laughs> When you say pull, do you mean like pull it up? Up, yeah, elbow to see so, And then as you come between your legs, let it rotate. Yeah. What is it rotate? So thumb like goes, that. yeah, thumb goes through. And then spin back out and stay tight. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that feels a bit better when you sort of rotate it. So and then finish really tight again. Let's get back to the front rack position. Ooh. You want to hear that hurts when you when it kind of smacks on the bicep, doesn't it? So you've got to like get more of a. So if if that's starting to happen, if you're starting to feel it smack you on your shoulder and your bicep, it just means that we've stopped driving with the hips and we're pulling a little bit too much with with the bicep. Right. Am I getting that? Yeah. Just keep it really tight and always remember we want to catch it here in that front okay. rack position. Nice and tight. Big elbow drive. Good. <coughs> Try a few on the other side. Yeah. It's quite a high skill movement, right? You can't get yeah, it sort of straight away. One. So again, with any single arm exercise, we want to make sure we practice on, on our on our Yeah, it definitely feels like a different kind of movement on the other week around. So again, let the thumb travel through behind you, that's it. Right, so then you drive up and then pop. Yeah, okay. really good. And let's finish in the front rack position again. Every right. time. So hand to chest. Okay. Better. Is it? Good. It's definitely a bit more fidget on that one. It takes a bit more practice, I think. Yeah, definitely. And it's like a, it's like a, a new skill, right? Imagine, yeah. imagine trying to pick up a guitar and play it. Yeah. Like you might have a few chords, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to, to nail Stairway to Heaven on your first week. So I wish. Jimmy Page. Yeah. Right, so we've done that one. We're now onto the what's this one? The press. A single oh, arm press. Okay. So as soon as we've done our single arm single clean, arm press. we got into our front rack position, we can go into our press. Okay. So, so that's the clean, so there. Yeah. And the press is up, right? Yeah, so what we're gonna do from here, uh, we're gonna take that kettlebell straight up overhead. So it's gonna come out to the side, finish nice and tall. You want bicep next to ear, 
and we want to make sure that our rib cage is down so we're not leaning back. Then it's going to follow the same path on the way down. So front rack, out and up. So we get a little bit of transverse plane movement through the shoulder, a bit of external rotation. Really good for that shoulder. Yeah, so a lot of people say, I feel like when they show they finish there, yeah. you've got to really get up, right? That's it, exactly. <sighs> Try not to tip the ear to the bicep. Try and bring the bicep to meet the ear. Good. So Joe's like naturally using his legs. Should I not? Um, it depends what we want to do. So that's a push press one, use your legs, which is going to be a little bit easier because you're going to get hip drive. Right. If we want to really work our shoulders, let's not use the legs, let's just use the shoulder. Pretty good. So finish in there. Yeah. Just pause at the top. So we want rib cage down, which gets your abs tight. As soon as you pull that rib cage down, abs come into flexion and we take load off of the lower back. Whoa. Right, let's go left arm. Oh, it's a good workout. We're not even, this, is just a, this is just a technique. Wait till the, the next video is going to be an actual workout. So, from there. Rack. So let's go no legs to start. Okay. Just abs really tight. Try and get those legs straight. Squeeze your butt at the top as well. Good. And let's get back to the front rack. Oh, yeah, so. From there. Just put all your energy into that shoulder. Good. Bicep. Bicep to ear, not ear to bicep. Good. The last piece of the puzzle, really cage down on the top. Good man. That's it. I always find it hard to do that, to pull that down. Like yoga, they. I'm just because I feel like I'm sitting down, so to try and pull that down, it's a difficult thing to get in it. This here. So when we go overhead, most of us are just naturally tight through here. Yeah, we're really all tight. our day like this and this and this and tired, like we're hanging out, drinking with our mates, like yeah. eating food. And we all do that, so we're just really tight through here. So, so we need to spend as much time as possible in this overhead position because all we're thinking in our head, right, is A to B. That's all we're thinking. So we just naturally want to go like that to get yeah. to B. Whereas actually you want to be nice. Yeah, and my tight mobility, if you see, I mean, I'm not, I've got a really tight chest, I've got to work on that, but yeah, I'm tight in my lats as well, I do a lot of pull ups. That's it. But that's a great move, mate. So the final one, ooh, this is the real challenge, right? Half get up. Yep. Went to that one now? Uh, so let's go, let's put the two movements together. So clean and press together. Just put them together first. Uh, we've, we've, we've cued them both, so we're going to do a clean. We're going to catch it in our front rack, and then we're going to press. Come back down, and we go back into the clean. So the two movements together, put them into almost like a complex or a superset. That's a great move. There. There. Nice. So as soon as you've learned those two movements on their own, you can put them together. The problem most people make is they want to do that movement together, but they haven't learned the clean and the press separately. And even the first bit's the swing in it, really. So you've got a lot of hips, and then shoulder. How's that? Good. Just make sure we get back to that front right position. We there. Yeah. Nice. Let's try the other round. So when we go into our swing, let's get a little bit more, more yeah. hip driving back. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Good. So there. Nice. Oh, well, just doing that with you for that, like, what, 20 minutes is really giving me confidence. So it's definitely improved my technique. Totally. Now I can up my kind of kettlebell content on the YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed that. Tom, thanks for coming, mate. Welcome, bro. The next video you see is going to be me and Tom doing a real, real-time kettlebell workout. So tune in. I'll put the link below and go and check it out for another kettlebell workout with me and Tom from Techno Gym. See you later, guys. See you guys.